welcome to Kings Canyon National Park. According to the van, it's only two degrees outside right now. And also we're seeing snow for like the first time in a really long time because we are up in the mountains today. We're gonna to be driving through Kings Canyon National Park and also Sequoia National Park. They're kind of like sisters. They're right next to each other. I feel like it's been a while since I properly checked in on the vlog. You can probably hear in my voice that I'm still recovering from my cold, my that Dan and I both had. We were sick while we drove through Big Sur and San Francisco and then we kind of had vacation booked to see Yosemite, which we did, but we also just ended up kind of resting and trying to recover and feel better. Dan is definitely feeling 100%. I would say I'm at like 98. I just still have this sort of residual cough going on, but I th I'm pretty much better. But we're still out here doing the National Park Circuit. And like I was saying today, it's all about Kings Canyon and Sequoia. I'm super excited for the beautiful views of the mountains and also to see some massive trees. It's gonna be really cool and I'm excited to bring you along. So let's go. We've spotted a sequoia. For anyone who doesn't know, sequoias are these massive trees, like so wide around. They can live for at least 3,000 years, sometimes longer. Just as we were walking up, Dan was telling me that they actually used to log these trees a long time ago. There's a lot of lumber in that tree. And definitely there is, but for me, like seeing this, it's like, I understand back then people, settlers, had a different like view of the environment than we do now, but just walking up to a tree of this size, like it just is like awe-inspiring. Like I can't, I just got drift on. <laughs> I just can't imagine like looking at this and being like, yeah, it's disposable. Let's cut it down and build a house out of it. You know what I mean? Like it just yeah. is incredible. It is crazy. They stopped logging, I think it said in 1890. The trees live for a really long time and it takes a long time for them to grow. This yeah, no too. kidding. Like I just feel like there's no way that those people would have had a sense that these trees were thousands of years and old. And they are kind of rare. They really only grow yeah. in this one particular area. Yeah. But there's lots of groves throughout the national park. We'll see a lot of them today. Only certain areas got logged. They're really incredible trees. It's unreal. I guess 6,000 feet of elevation was enough to bring us back to winter. I, it definitely snowed. I, I read that it snowed a lot here a couple days ago, like four or six inches of snow um, a day or two ago. So it's mostly melting, but we get a random day of winter. Yeah, it's dripping everywhere. I think it's cool though. I'm not mad. I think it's really like It's pleasant beautiful. out. It's not too cold. I love when the snow is white like this and it makes you know, everything bright. Yeah. I just can't get over the number of stumps around here. I know we're on a trail through Big Stump Grove, but just seeing all these stumps that are from obviously like incredibly majestic trees and just cut down, like it just feels so careless. Like it's heartbreaking. Like imagine they'd be towering over all the trees around them now if they were still standing, which they would be if people hadn't cut them down. This may be the biggest stump in Big Stump Grove. Should I take people up there? Sure. Here we are, standing on a massive stump. If you were walking and you saw this tree beside me, like that tree is huge. There's no way I could put my arms around it. But that's not even one of the giant sequoias. That's the giant sequoia. They're and that's massive. absolutely massive. Oh, I just got hit with snow. It's basically snowing under these trees because it's uh, melting out of the branches. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. 
don't know if it's even coming through on camera that this is wood because we're inside a tree. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's clear or not. <laughs> that's crazy. Here we are bringing you the inside scoop on the sequoia trees. Yeah, exactly. We're going all the way inside on this story. Yeah. <laughs> An insider perspective. Yeah. That's, okay. the, that's the joke. Those that's a good one. Those are some good jokes that you have. <laughs> This is the General Grant Grove. And actually, this was originally like the first part of this park to become a national park. And it was called General Grant National Park. And it was basically put in place just to protect the sequoias in this grove. And then since then, it expanded, included more area, and now it's called Kings Canyon National Park. Somehow I feel like calling it the nation's Christmas tree is kind of demeaning. It's so much more than that. It's the third largest sequoia in the world and it has a huge amount of historical and uh, conservational significance. It's more than just a Christmas tree. It's like seeing a theme and seeing the national parks is interesting and like I think that I don't know like what this says about like the diversity of like ecology in the U.S. but like Joshua Tree National Park, Saguaro National Park, and like Sequoia National Park, all in place to protect really specific plants, different yeah. like you know, trees or cactuses or whatever, that only happen to grow in that one special spot. Like you really don't see a lot of saguaros outside of that very specific region in Arizona, and you don't really see Joshua trees except for that one area of the Mojave Desert, and the sequoias are really specific to this area too. So it's just interesting to me that there's these really special species that like really only grow in a really specific zone. Yeah. You know, they're really not that common. It's pretty cool. It makes me really happy that those places are protected yeah, places. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. In 1875, they cut down one of these giant sequoias for a big exhibition in Philadelphia. It took them a long time to chop down a tree back then. Hey. <laughs> but they took a massive section of the trunk to this exhibition and the people thought it was a hoax. They didn't believe that there could really be trees that big. Isn't that yeah, crazy? It is crazy. Sequoia trees are the largest in the world by mass, by the amount of lumber in the tree. There are trees that are taller, there are a few trees that are wider too, but there's more mass of lumber in a sequoia than any, other, than any tree. other tree in the world. These are thick boys. Thick with 12 C's. <laughs> how a massive tree like that starts with a pine cone this small. Yeah. This is a pine cone for a giant sequoia tree. Look how small that is. That one is huge. That's got to be like the biggest one we've seen yet. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of this thing. I'm inside the base of a tree right but now. In your wisdom, I have doubts. are tons of people here at the General Sherman Tree Trail. I guess I can't blame them. It's probably one of the most famous trees in, in the world. Well, at least one of the most famous trees in America. And it's actually the largest tree in America. This is the lar it's not the tallest tree. It's not the widest tree. It's not the oldest tree. But it is the largest tree by mass in all of the US. The world, I thought. I think in all of the world. In the whole world. So it is busy. Lots of people here, yeah. Uh, but makes me think this place must it's be an absolute it. madhouse in the summer. Yeah, I know. in July and August, it must be like lined up. Yeah, all the way from here to Fresno. Yeah, seriously. I honestly feel like these big trees don't even, they, like the camera can't fully represent no. them. So I know to people watching this, they're probably like, "Why are you guys so excited about a forest?" But they are like just remarkable. It's a it's giant really forest. Cool. Yeah. It's literally what they call this area. And it is really cool. It's really impactful to see. Yeah. 
especially in person. Well, there it is. The world's largest tree by mass. It's right there. So the sign said that General Sherman, the, the world's largest tree where we just were, uh, is 2,200 years old. So yeah, it was crazy. It started growing before the year one. Before the year one. Yeah. Like back in BC. Yeah, exactly. Isn't that crazy? What I'm talking to you. Yeah, we're gonna take it slow. This is gonna be a hike back up to the van, but uh, might as well start now because we'll still be at it probably at sunset, so. It's only 0.4 of a mile, but it's uh, uphill, very much uphill. Uh, so, and it's at 7,000 feet. The air's a little thin. And the path is sloppy, wet, muddy, miserable. I really that sign is just saying look we know you're out of shape <laughs> we know you haven't done a no, lot of you know what if anything that signs an encouragement that we're not the only ones that are about to struggle right now let's just see how this goes and I'm back to Vanji but I'm on my own which is very unusual but I decided I would be very kind and I would spare Dan the long walk up the hill. So he's down there waiting at the accessible parking area and I'm gonna go get him. Aren't I so nice? I know. Now, I'll be honest, I don't fully know where I'm going because uh, obviously Dan normally does the driving, but I think I should be able to navigate there pretty easily because it's not that far. Of course, I move the seat forward whenever I drive, and then all of our stuff that's shoved between the seat and the counter just falls. Let's go. Free me from the prison. Come on in. Didn't I make like record time? Amazing work. Were you expecting it to be, be longer than that? I wasn't sure how long it would take. This national park, as with many others, is just beautiful to drive through. And just driving through the park is like part of the experience. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd let Katie take her, her turn behind the wheel experience. Yeah, that's why you let me climb up the massive hill <laughs> so that I can have my turn behind the wheel. I sent Katie up the hill and just waited for her to come pick me up at I the bottom. I told them about it. It's okay, I'm really nice. Oh man, see, the thing though is, Akiti, she's very nice, but she always films herself doing the nice things so that there's plenty of evidence of that. Ugh. Just you know. let it be known. Okay, for, look at all the sequoias we're driving past. Like, these are crazy. I just want it to be known that I legit thought it would take me like half an hour, 45 minutes to do that huge climb. And what time was it when we parted ways? It was like 4 o'clock, right? 4.01. Yeah, and I checked my uh, phone and when I got to the top, it was 10 after. Wow. So it did not take me that long. Like 10 minutes. Katie's gonna be entering the Olympics. Please <laughs> cheer for her this summer. She's doing the Olympic stair climb. Oh no. 2,000 steps in just under 10 minutes. Yeah, I only took one break. Wow. Wow. How come you're so amazing? highest point we were at today was 7,300 feet, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're already halfway down the mountain, pretty much. Oh, wow, yeah. I think this is going to be our final stop for the day in Sequoia National Park. And, whoa, this is beautiful. And that does it for another week of the van vlog. What are you laughing at? Something that Emily sent me on Snapchat. See, we always 
it's always like once we have cell reception again. <laughs> we check all our messages. And yeah. we get all the jokes. Get up to speed on things. Get the updates on our crazy friends doing crazy things off who knows where in Europe. We miss you back home. We miss our friends yeah. all over the world. I think that we're definitely starting to feel that at this stage in the trip. We haven't talked about that at all today in the vlog, but... I think that, like, I don't know, things were so busy and exciting and fun for the first, like, three months. I never felt, like, super homesick. But now I think we're both kind of getting to the point where we're still having a lot of fun and, like, obviously enjoying this trip. But we're also starting to look forward to going back home as well. I, I think so. I mean, today was a really fun day, a really full day. We definitely miss our friends back home. Mm -hmm. We're planning to be home in about a month from now. It'll go by fast, too. So and we have a lot of ground to cover between then and now. Exactly. From Three Rivers, California, where we are right now, till home is many thousands of kilometers. Yep. <laughs> So make sure you're subscribed and come along for the journey because we still have a lot of stuff to do in the next month before we end up back in Ontario. But thanks for watching this week's video. As always, thank you so much for watching. We miss you all back home. We love you and we will see you in the next video. Bye.